Well, sorry I'm late. I started right in the part of the story I wanted to write and got lost in it. Let me get the word out, then we will get this started. Just give a quick shout out on Spoutable that I'm live and we will get the party started whether the chat fills up or not. Welcome to the Bonnet Chronicles. I'm your host, Kalari GXC. Tonight, we are going to be talking some serious news topics, um, some advanced technology topics and then we're gonna end uh, things with a react because there's been some wild shit going on all week and i'm just happy to be here as you know i had to take tuesdays off until kiddo graduates so right now friday's audubon and chronicles day and then on youtube saturdays we don't do saturday react lives it's a lot of fun so if you go to either or i hope that you enjoy it we're going to open up with the news that happened here in Michigan. As you know, two years ago in December, uh, Ethan Crumley, a young, pretty much distraught man who had plenty of cries for help, so much that teachers and plenty of beings knew this kid wasn't right. This kid was crying out for help. He needed guidance, patience, and parents who cared instead he was ignored he was left alone a lot and then he was brought in ar-15 by his parents he murdered six students injured a couple of others right before christmas it hits hard when you have kids who are still school age my son is a senior at high school there's a reason why i put him in a virtual school for his high school because so many times we were either having lockdowns or active shooter drills and it's a lot to put on kids nerves and then you think about the parents who had to bury their kids who had to lose a child that they wanted to see grow and flourish and had plans for their future just snuffed out because we don't take mental health seriously. We don't chastise or condemn parents who allow their kids to do stuff like this until today. Well, technically not today. It happened a few days ago. Both the parents of school shooter Ethan Crumley was sentenced to 10 to 15 years of prison. Welcome to the chat. Respect is good to see you, dear. And the thing is, I know some people who are pro-gun will be like, well, this is a travesty. All they did was exercise their Second Amendment rights. They bought their kid a gun. He was licensed to. And I'm going to tell you as somebody, once again, who come from family who are gun owners, who married a man who is a registered gun owner, there is a difference between being a responsible gun owner and being neglectful, ignoring your son's mental health traumas, and allowing him a weapon when he was hurting to hurt and kill other people. We have got to stop making excuses for these people who do not deserve to be gun owners, thus clouding the pool of people who responsibly use gun safes like we have in our home, because I have made it clear because of my mental health, I should not have access to firearms. I am firearms trained, former job required it. I know that if I have wanted to end myself, it is the quickest way to do it. And that's why my partner is very protective of the gun safe. You do not allow people with mental health issues ease of access to weapons like that. I don't think so either respect. And that is the sad part is that they probably won't and they'll probably be able to appeal and get it down to a lesser thing. I just want this to set a precedent to all those parents who think it's cool to pose with guns for Christmas photos with their kids, who teach their sons to man up and keep all those emotions deep within you. Don't ever show your true self and don't understand your true self and ignore them as they go through confusing times as teenagers with all the hormones and shit. And then give them a weapon like this. And of course, anything can set them off. And then you have another Uvalde. You have another Parkland. You have another, I forget the name of the school up here that he shot at. But it wasn't that far from where I used to live. The fact of the matter is, if we don't start holding parents accountable, even that fucker in Virginia who literally let her little elementary school son get her his hand on a gun and shot a teacher every parent that puts that kind of danger into the path of innocent people deserve 
to be prosecuted. I don't care what your ethnicity is. I don't care what your background is. If you're not going to be responsible for your child's actions, you shouldn't be a parent. Point blank. And I don't even understand that Tennessee, Florida, there are 29 states now that are constitutional right to carry, which I understand as an American citizen, it's our right to bear arms. It's normally supposed to be to form militias against invading people. But we have twisted that so much. And now we have people literally creating this new culture in kids as young as kindergarten. And I would love to believe that those laws would be gun safety, not to treat guns like a weapon. Like, I remember my granddaddy's words forever when he put the first gun in my hand. These are not toys. You are not to play with it. It has one job, and that is to take a life. And I think too many people play around with these weapons like they're, they're just accessories. They are literally there to take a life. And I do not understand the people that play with it. And I do not understand the parents that think, well, my kid's not like that. He won't do that. Sure, he has a manifesto. He's just a little eccentric. Sure, he has had a girlfriend and he's awkward around anybody. And he gets angry at me easily. But it's just a boy thing. It's just boys being boys. No. It is a culture of coddling. It's a culture of irresponsibility. It's a culture of parents having kids that they don't want to deal with. It's a culture of not understanding that, yeah, there are forms of teen aggression from time to time. But you as a parent are supposed to discipline your child so that shit like this don't happen. And like I told people, I, I can't be anti-gun. I was literally raised in the military, law enforcement, and opposite side of law enforcement type family. I grew up around guns, but I grew up around responsible gun ownership. And I do not understand why people think that you can't be liberal-minded, pragmatically liberal as I am, and understand that safety is the most important thing to gun ownership. Not just giving your kid a weapon of destruction and expecting, well, they'll just be, they'll, they'll do me right. You had a girl in Texas not that long ago that was trained by her father. And how did she repay him? She made a pact with another little girl and then she murdered her father and herself. This is what happens when you give kids who are not emotionally mature enough, not responsible enough to seriously understand what they have in their hands, that kind of power. And until we wake up and start really teaching these parents that if you're going to do that, yeah, it happened. She was 12. On the internet, making a pact with another little girl that if they killed their families, that they could run off together. That little girl wasn't even serious. And that's the problem with not monitoring what your kids do online. And she legitimately killed her father, the man who taught her how to use a firearm. That's why I said there's a sickness within our culture. The sick obsession with... I want to be a badass. I'm going to protect my family with it. And I can understand having a gun for protection, but it shouldn't be in a child's hands. It should not be in the hands of somebody who is legitimately mentally unstable. And I think too many people don't understand that our country is full of that. And that's why these tragedies keep happening. It is not just the gun. It is who you put the gun, whose hands the guns are in. And we have got to stop turning a blind eye. Welcome to the chat, Beans. It's good to see you. Welcome for the lurk, Grandamere. I think giving these people that sentence, even if they don't serve the 10 to 15 years. Okay, Oxford. I was wondering, because I was like, I knew that high school was named after uh, actual college, Ivy League school, but I didn't want to say the wrong thing. And it was Oxford in 2021. And I was wrong about it being two years ago. It just felt like two years ago. I know I was living close to where that shit happened. And all it did was make me feel like, yeah, I was right taking kiddo out of traditional school and putting him in a virtual high school because it wasn't getting any better. Even though they really, they up restricted us for a bit, they started to let up and kids were allowed to go back to school. And then the first not even two years into the pandemic restrictions being uplifted, we have this Oxford shooting. It doesn't matter 
if you think that your kid's mature enough. It doesn't matter if you've been a card-carrying NRA member for years. When you put a weapon into a child who is crying for help and you ignore them's hands, you are setting them up to do shit like this. And if you consider yourself a responsible gun owner, a responsible gun owning family, and you don't monitor what your kids are doing with themselves, you're itching to be either their victim, like that poor father in Texas was, or watch a potential school shooting happen because of your neglect. And I just, I can't, I can't say enough about how, while I'm, content that they did get sentenced. I'm upset that there are still going to be people that think, well, they're martyrs. They're not martyrs. Let me see. What is that? Oh, that was that absentee ballot stuff. I think I want this one. Yep. And this is not an in memoriam, y'all. I don't think I'm going to shock too many people with my take on this because I've been openly vocal about this man for years, how I felt a lot of people twisted what happened in LA and it went by his picture. It's fine. I don't need to show his picture. With Rodney King, with trying to say that what he did should either be excused or he was being railroaded. And I remember where I was back in the day when all of this went down, when the first news broke that Ron Brown and Nicole Simpson's body were found in her, I believe, Brentwood home, right in the alleyway of, because they had a little alcove or whatnot, stabbed to death. I remember our championship Knicks game being interrupted because homeboy decided, I'm going to jump in Al Cowling's Bronco and hold up and have a bunch of police chasing me because I'm distraught from being accused of this. And yeah, I even remember the fucking trial because Marsha Clark, who went to the same high school as me, was one of the prosecutors. And instead of prosecuting what should have been a slam dunk case, it turned into a media frenzy circus that she couldn't control. And she put that dumbass racist cop on the stand who got shredded by Johnny Cochran. Do I believe OJ did it? Fuck yeah, I do. Why? Because he had a history of fucking domestic violence. A history that our community likes to ignore from time to time if a person's famous, if they make enough swag, or if they're intimidated enough. A lot of us look the other way from shit that we know is wrong. Look at fucking Jonathan Majors only getting a fucking year of probation after he's been credibly convicted of domestic violence against a partner. But because he's a big time actor, even though his career is pretty much fucking shot now, maybe because a lot of times these men fail up again. The fact of the matter is OJ's legacy, whether people like it or not, whether people want to still believe after all these years he was just railroaded, whether they want to ignore the clear bruises that Nicole used to have and other partners of him used to have, his legacy will always be somebody who got away with murder twice because there were two victims and somebody even if he allegedly didn't do it like his weird ass book said or if i did it beat the fuck out of his partners constantly and isolated his children let's be fucking for real for once with this we have to stop idolizing these people just because they're famous we have to stop treating these people like, oh, he was just railroaded because he's a brother man. But you'll ignore a pro- poor brother man like Kylie's brother, who spent years of fucking Rikers for allegedly stealing a backpack, which he didn't fucking do. You ignore his mental health because, oh, it just happens. You'll ignore Breonna Taylor, who was sleeping in her fucking bed, murdered by a no-knock raid. But you want to give somebody who had the fortunate ability to be an athlete and then mirror that into fame with acting but does horrible things you do it with fucking musicians who are literal pedos there's still some of you motherfuckers out there standing r kelly's ass he literally made videos they had to make a documentary called surviving his ass he groomed Aaliyah. our community needs to stop fucking coddling these abusive motherfuckers if we are ever going to get anywhere. 
I don't need you coming at me like, oh, no, no, all black man, Tim. You're just saying that because you're not with a black man. I was raised by a fucking black man. I had grandfathers who were strong black men. They didn't put their hands on their women. They didn't beat them to fucking death. They didn't go around stabbing them because they moved on. Allegedly. Because they don't even know if Nicole and Ron were dating. He, uh, from all accounts, was there to take her out as a friend. But when you deal with somebody who's so irrationally jealous, and it doesn't matter their ethnicity, because need I remind you, my ex-partner who was like that, who I had to look over my fucking shoulder, was not a black man either. But I say in our community, we tend to turn a blind fucking eye to domestic violence and abuse, and it's sad. Because it shouldn't happen. And there's not enough money in the world or fame in the world for me to kiss the ass of somebody who I believe murdered those two, who I believe had a strong history of abusing women, and who, you know, he's gone. That's the only thing I can say about it. He's gone. We all need to move on. He got away with murdering two people because he had good lawyers and because the prosecution team did not treat the case with enough severity, did not screen the witnesses well enough to not be shredded for their awful abhorrent beliefs. The problem is so many fold. But when I had an auntie back when he was acquitted or found not guilty, because acquitted means you were convicted and then acquitted. When he was found not guilty, I had a great auntie that called me up. Was like, praise be to God. He was set free. And I was like, why do you care? He's not family. He's not a friend of us. And I believe he did it. She was stunned. She, she thought I was going to be like that. And then she was like, but you know, after Rodney King, and I was like, Rodney King was literally on tape beaten up by four police officers of the LAPD. What happened to him was fucking ridiculous. You cannot compare him to a man who used his wealth to get away with murder. And I know that some of my family side-eyed me for that, but a lot of them agreed. Because point blank, if he had been a broke motherfucker, he would not, he would have been put under the jail. And then they got him again for stealing back his own memorabilia. Because he thought he was untouchable like a lot of these motherfuckers with money do. Look at Diddy flying the fucking coop. Eventually they're going to catch him. There's way too much uh, alleged trafficking allegations. There's way too much evidence. There's no amount of money that will shield you from the law eventually. OJ just got fucking lucky. And now he's in whatever abyss he belongs in, as far as I'm concerned. I just get so freaking annoyed with stuff like this because too many people think, well, you know, you all stick together. It's like, who are you all? Because if I don't know you, I don't motherfucking know you. And I did not know that man. And I do not want to know that man. But let me interact with this because apparently people, for some reason, is dim. And y'all, as y'all know, last week, I was making fun of the Eclipse conspiracy theorists. Because I thought it was just TikTok being TikTok. Exactly, Neon. There has been. And welcome to the chat. There are too many people that downplay the shit OJ did, period. And I'm not okay with that. And you will never get me to be like, oh, I'm going to miss that man. Nope, he gets no in memoriam. He gets a good riddance to vile, violent rubbish. And I will be saying the same thing with Jonathan Major's old abusive ass passes. Because I'm tired of these men thinking they can get away with shit like that. But as I said last week, I was making fun of the people who were so afraid of the total eclipse we had on April 8th. We're getting another one in two years, so you know the wackadoos will come back, right? When I heard this, I prayed that it wasn't one of us because I joked about it last week, how the TikTok compilations did not feature anybody that looked like us. It was worse than I imagined because this astrology influencer, which I I hate the term influencer. I'm I'm not even going to flex. It's part of the internet dark ages rant that I'm about to go on after this. But apparently this Danielle Johnson lady killed her partner, stabbing him to death, Threw her infant child and herself in the oncoming traffic in L.A. Because she believed that the total eclipse was a sign that it was the end of days. So many people bought into that shit. I love astrology. It's something that I read every once in a while. It's not a 
hyper focus on practice. Every once in a while, you want to read what's going to happen to a Gemini, or what's going to happen to your Capricorn spouse, or what's going to happen to your Aquarius son, because it's just entertainment most of the time for me. I don't disbelieve, but I don't take it as heavily as some people. And I have somebody who calls himself an astrology influencer, giving me that Miss Cleo vibes, going this hard and deep for something that has been going on since our world has been created. Eclipses have happened for centuries, actually millions of years. We have to stop getting away from science and technology. I don't think spirituality has to hurt because you're smarter. I think there's a myth that smart people can't believe in higher powers. That's a lie. Plenty of smart people understand that there's scientific phenomenon that have been ongoing since our creation and can still believe in higher powers. It's those who limit themselves, like this young lady more than likely did, and only want to believe in the stars and the cosmos without using her brain to understand that this phenomenon constantly happens that do vile things like this. And it said on April 8th, the same day of the eclipse, Daniel Johnson pushed the two children from a moving car on a busy Los Angeles highway around 4.30 a.m. local time. According to the Los Angeles police, half an hour later, she drove a Porsche SUV 100 miles per hour and crashed into a tree in the city of Redondo Beach. While her nine-year-old sustained moderate injuries from the fall and was transported to a local hospital, a press release from the LAPD said her eight-month-year-old child sustained fatal injuries and was pronounced deceased at the scene. Johnson did not survive the crash and was the sole occupant of the vehicle. Earlier that day, she fled the home with the children after stabbing her partner. Now, apparently the partner did not die, so perhaps... That is a silver lining in all of this fucking chaos. But an eight-month-old lost their life. A nine-year-old is critically injured. A father is stabbed. All because people, humans, refuse to fucking grow the fuck up. I can understand centuries ago where an eclipse to people who didn't have technology, science was still scorned, which kind of still is from time to time because dum-dum's got a dum-dum making this out to be the end of the world or a sign from God or whatever they want to call it. But in this day and age where you can literally be on the device and watch the total eclipse without fucking up your eyes, where we literally have space agencies that go up into the cosmos for people to still act like this and grift off of people who don't want to know any better. It's fucking shameful. But we continue on. And this young lady looked like a beautiful young lady, but she tweeted on the 4th, this eclipse is the epitome of spiritual warfare. And I'm sorry to laugh, but I've been listening to this shit for a while now. These people that think, well, God's going to do the big apocalypse. Get your protections on and your heart in the right place. This world is very obviously changing right now. If you ever needed to pick the side, you got to do right in your life right now. Stay strong. You got this. Like, ma'am, you stabbed your partner, tried to murk two of your kids, you murked one of them, and then you ended your own life. What side are you going to be on? Because if you truly believe in, in the cosmos, because I think she also interwove some Bibles in there, you're not getting in, even by your own rules. You murdered your child. You stabbed and attempted murder your partner. I don't know if it was her husband or not. I think they said it was. You tried to murder another kid and you killed yourself. According to your own Christian rules, you're not getting past those gates. So I don't know what she was thinking. I don't understand it because this isn't, I don't wholeheartedly invest myself in this level fuckery. But I just see so many people twisting faith to a point where they can't function without believing that every sign is the end of days. And you've got to stop wanting the end of days because we are in a tech driven future that is one of the things i wanted to talk about before i got to the react was there's a lot of talk against ai right now a lot of people who are severely anti-ai let me see if this is the article yeah there we go 
because they feel like, oh, it's going to take over. And welcome, Cornhole. They think AI is going to take over, it's going to take all our jobs, it's going to make people redundant, it's going to take over. I've heard it. In fact, there was a story, once again, I wish I had the article at hand, but I'm sure some of you have heard, Beans, this is out in your territory, about that woman that decided to take her son, and I believe her aunt off the grid with her because she was afraid that humans were going to be first forced to merge with technology and be controlled. And as somebody who literally wrote a sci-fi novel about humans evolving with technological spores, at first I laughed, but then I realized these are humans serious about ending themselves because they're afraid of technology. This is where we're at. I'm literally writing in the second novel about a group of anti-tech humans, as it is. And I don't even need to stray them that far from the truth because we have them here. I had a friend in Florida that was completely anti-tech for the longest time. He finally got a computer for porn like most dudes do. But for the longest time, he did not want to deal with anything technology-based. Point blank, period. He liked to fix clocks. That was his big thing. He hated tech. And he was like a catalyst for writing about the group because I wanted to take his attitude. But then I heard that story about that woman that was just like, you're not going to turn us into robots. And it's like, ma'am, you just get a headache from it. And now we have these industry tech people. I didn't mean to get rid of, there we go, interact. That says his goal is to be an additive to humanity. Now, do I trust a lot of the tech moguls? No, because you know how I feel about apartheid edgelord running Twitter into the ground. I still can't forgive his ass for that. But all these people are like, they're going to chip us. They're going to barcode us. They're going to do this. You're already using social media owned by the majority of them. You're already telling all your bad, good, and in-between business online. You're already... Literal plants for data farmers to mine how you sleep, where you shop, what you eat, what you do. So to act like having AI doing things, having robots be made is all of a sudden the end of times for you, get the fuck over it. Most tech people want tech to work with us. We're just not keeping up pace. It feels like in this digital dark age, even though I do believe we will hit a renaissance at some point, we have so many holdouts. So many people who believe, oh, no, it's going to be the end of us. Oh, it's going to be bad. It's going to be... It's going to be a time for humans to finally start learning and wising the fuck up. I do not understand why it's always got to be a competition. They said this is a four-minute read, but I skimmed it earlier. Says the CEO and co founder of Cohair, a Toronto based startup competing with other leading AI companies in supply in large language models and chatbots. They want chatbots to be able to assist humans. If you're a script writer, like I am, if you want an audiobook, which I still employ humans for that, I still write my own stuff. Would it be easier for me with graphic novel stuff to employ an AI? Uh, I don't even want to call them an AI bot. An AI being to help, sure, but I'd rather employ an actual human. It takes longer, yes. But I know I'm getting quality stuff from somebody who could take what I'm saying and draw it out. And I'm not anti-AI art. I still think it leaves a lot to be desired with diversity and drawing beings that aren't, you know, non-melanated. But in time, if these companies really want to work with stuff that will advance with humans and they recognize all humans, we will get to a point where artists even can have AI help them with inking, with coloring, if they're just good at drawing the initial sketching and can help train each other. I am not intimidated by AI. I said it before. Apple had reached out, they haven't since I didn't respond to the email because I was getting a lot of weird emails, including writer offers during the writer's strike, and I'm not a scab. But I was offered to have my book train their AI, and I didn't know how I felt about that because A, I need to see a contract so that I didn't lose my IP. B, back then, when the offer was made, 
I wasn't sure if they were exploiting me or exploiting AI. Now that I've been explained and I understand a lot of the process, I would not mind training an AI for writing. But I want people to understand that I'm not doing it so that I can be replaced. My imagination, my way with building characters is always going to be mine. I don't feel that AI is a threat to those of us with creative talents. And I feel like that there are people that don't have creative talents that want to drum up that narrative to make those of us in the creative spheres afraid. And we need to stop. The only thing I worry about especially for musicians and actors, is their likeness being used after death and their families not being compensated by the people abusing that technology. But that's a whole other kettle of fish. For those of us in the writing industry, AI could legitimately be a boon for our audiobooks, for editing and correcting, for training AI for the future. But it will never replace those of us who have the spark to want to keep stories alive and written. But there are way too many people that don't have that, that want us to believe that, and we have got to stop that. I do believe AI is the future. It's already here. It's already being used. I like listen to YouTube a lot, so I hear a lot of different AI voices being used. And yes, if you're trained to listen, you can hear the difference between something that's uh, actual human and an AI. Because it's still not tweaked enough to sound like real human cadence. They often stumble on words that sometimes humans do too. I've heard a lot of icebergs where the young men especially can't pronounce certain words. It's hard. I know phonics isn't for everybody. But you can definitely tell when somebody's using the AI voice too. Because the way they say numbers always crack me up. I just think that in this day and age of technology, you either get with the program or you end up fearful and cutting yourself off. And as a Gen Xer who went from literal analog to this digital age, I don't understand why people are so afraid to change. What's the problem? It's gonna happen with or without you. Why wouldn't you wanna be a part of it so that you can have a say in how AI is used? You can have a say in how it generates stuff for you. I just don't understand why we are staying, so many humans are ripping this fear of it and keeping us in the internet dark age we need to move past these fears and keep learning because knowledge is the only way to keep up with ai you don't want it to surpass you you want it to be on par with you humans need to do better but i'm gonna get to a more fun side because i was shocked by this but i shouldn't be as you know i'm not on tiktok i just don't do it but I am on YouTube, so I get my compilation straight up from YouTube. And I heard that it is a competition, exactly, but I feel like people limit themselves too. People, it's, and I blame the school system a lot for that, not the teachers, but the system itself, for placing constraints on people's ability to learn and the pace. I think if we stop restricting people and trying to box them in, to a learning program of one size fit all and started teaching people at a pace where they can grip things, humans would be a lot smarter. But we constrict people, we test them, we tell them they're not good enough, they don't read fast enough, they're not strong enough in this subject or that subject, instead of working, especially with younger minds. We don't even teach foreign languages some schools until junior high. Missing out on that key factor that elementary school students and toddlers are way easier to train different languages. It is our fault for letting this antiquated learning system continue on. And we have to start calling this shit out and stop refusing to learn. Especially those of us who are adults. We make time for such crazy things whether it's hobbies or gaming and everything else but we never devote like a day or two out of our time to learn something new whether it's a craft whether it's language whether it's anything that you thought you couldn't do it before it's on us to grow with our ever-changing ever adaptive ever tech infused world we have these smart devices that we use for looking up, for texting each other, for making vid calls. 
This is literally a computer in the palm of our hands now. And instead of appreciating that and using it to learn, we said, I'm not, I'm technologically, uh, what was that word that lady used over the phone the other day? It made Greg's head hurt and he couldn't wait to tell me about it. Uh, technologically illiterate, they like to call themselves. The same people that want to ban books because, oh no, diversity bad. The same people that constantly drag us backwards when we should be shooting forward. We have literal scientific goals where people are making pinpointed dark mass in forms. Colliding stuff, which I know conspiracy theories. That's why everything's Mandela effect. No. We have to stop being anti-tech and we have to stop being anti-science. We have to move forward. But speaking of things that move us backwards, as you know, like I said, I'm not on TikTok, but I did hear about Beyonce's country album. I have not heard it yet. Country is not as deep of a wheelhouse for me music-wise, even though I believe music is universal. I grew up with a granddaddy who was born and raised in Texas. He listened to everything from Hank Williams Jr. to Charlie Pride. He was a big-time country fanatic. Everything from a tear in my beer to Tammy Wynette, Stand By Your Man. So this young lady who decided, I'm going to fuck up my life by being a dumb racist on TikTok, decided to say this nonsense. Sorry, but if you're black, you're not country. I, I don't care. Like, it, And I wish I meant that in the nicest way. But like, babe, I know you were raised in the country, or your grandparents were, I guess great granny and green poles, but they was picking okay they wasn't See, I didn't even get that far with they were picking because this level of racist ignorance already got on my nerves so you're telling people because they lived in the country were born in the country and like myself an adult descendant of slaves even though I'm not adults y'all you know how I feel about them dusty assy motherfuckers too I don't even call myself country, even though I lived in the South for 20 years to go to school and stuff. I'm New York. I was born and raised in New York. I am a New York City girl whose accent switched up because of where I lived for a few years for college and stuff. But my grandfather, my grandmother, on both sides were from the fucking South. From South Carolina and Texas, to be correct. So the fact that you want to gatekeep who can call themselves country right there is fucking dumb. And I'll tell you right now, the only country that I really listen to right now outside Reba, Shania Twain every once in a while, and Lil Nas X, because let's not forget that his first big ass hit was a country pop bop, Old Town Road. Now I'm sure you're a little fucking non-melanated ass unskinny bop too. Music for me has always been a passion because it's universal, whether it's classic, whether it's hard rock. I used to have my friend Danny sending me death fucking metal because there were some death metal songs that really were amazing. Not just the choreography and the sounds that it brought, but the fucking lyrics. So for somebody to gatekeep music like this and say, your parents, your grandpappy and grandmommy were picking, bitch, your grandparents were fucking own it. You should be more ashamed of that than me being ashamed of your fucking ancestors dehumanizing mine. But of course, it's TikTok. And this idiot put this on TikTok, not realizing as a nursing student of all things, she's going to fuck up her life. Planting. It does. It mine too, Neon. Keep that in mind. They wasn't making money. I was getting sold for money. They were making your ancestors money, dum dum. They weren't making money to get sold for money. She really thought she was doing a thing. Fucking ignorance, man. It has to be bliss because so many people indulge in it. Gay country. Boots and a motherfucking jeans and a cut off to a frat party. All this because huh? she hates black people. All this because Beyonce relates to fucking country album. When need I remind you, Beyonce is from motherfucking Texas. She's always been a Texas girl. She's been proud of her Texas roots. No. 
So not too long ago, Beyonce released her country album called Cowboy Carter, and the album has been doing pretty well. But and not to interrupt the young lady, this is also on top of a CNA's appearance that she did about I think two years ago, that had a lot of fucking racist backlash. No shock there. But you know, we're supposed to just accept Kid Rock's all fucking raggedy ass everywhere. When he wanted to be a rap star, I couldn't really break out into that because he's no motherfucking Eminem and decided, no, nah, I'm going to be country now. I'm going to be full right wing because them, you know what, didn't accept me. So we're supposed to allow, and I know some people that are black people gatekeep hip hop. No, the fuck we don't. Even if you got some loud motherfuckers who say white people can't be in hip hop, white people have been broken into hip hop from uh, Dirt Bass with the Gas Face, who I used to love them, Beastie Boys. Eminem, some of them newer guys that I don't really know that well. I even listen to Korean rap. Tableau. I believe that rap is universal as well. But if you're not good at rap, you're going to get fucking clowned on. Point blank, period. And like I said, I haven't heard Beyonce's new country album yet, but I'm sure it's fucking fire. And that's why these racist assholes are losing their mind about it. They go, oh, then we can't have anything. We just want to gatekeep our boot scoot and uh, country thing. But need I remind you, Charlie Pride, the black man, broke out in the country several years ago and was a fucking legend. Dum dums. Since the album released, some yep. white people. House of Pain. I forgot about that. I loved House of Pain. My one, uh, my mom's co worker, we called him Bill. He was a dear friend of the family. Every time he was dropping my mom off from work, he blasted jump around. We knew they were coming down the block because his, he'd have the street shaking with his subwoofers playing that song. I just feel like people act like music has to be gatekept. And if Prince taught us anything, music is universal. If Bowie taught us anything, music is universal. And you should only restrict genres if you want to be stuck in one genre. I don't. I love music. Music really gets me by writing. It helps heal me when I'm feeling down. So when I see people this ignorant trying to gatekeep music, it just pisses me off have lost their freaking minds because yep. how dare a black person sing country music right even though country music was invented by black people but now, you i'm know, not even gonna say that because i will give us rock and roll and the blues because it's documented but country has always had more of a folksy root and the majority of country stars are white people i'm not gonna take that from them it's just like the majority of metal singers are white people, but I still listen to some in living color because they went hard. Like, I honestly don't understand why in the year 2024, we're still playing these fucking childish games where who can sing what, who can do what. Boundaries should not be set in the art of music or art anyway. But you got these people, they just can't. She probably can't sing a fucking lick of country, but it's talking about God. Beyonce doesn't belong and you can't be country if you're black. Ma'am, get all the way the fuck out of here. That's not a fact that white people like to hear very much. <laughs> they don't. But facts don't care about anybody's feelings, okay? So well, Beyonce, like, as huh? a black person, as a black woman, have every right to sing country music if she wants to because her people invented that ish. And also the fact that Beyonce is from... And I'm going to side note because I don't think Ivy is from here. I don't believe we invent a country, and I will give that convey. But somebody from motherfucking Texas has all the right in the world if they want to sing motherfucking country. Point blank. Exactly. I Let me tell you. And people tried to clown on Eminem for the longest time, especially when he first came out, and he had a lot more poppy bops. bops. But he has had some serious music, some serious bars, and... I just don't understand people that want to hate instead of understanding that music is universal. Texas. So, yeah. Enough said. Now, yeah. back to the Ray to the Sixth EA at the beginning of this video, who single-handedly high chance destroyed her chance of becoming a nurse and any other future job prospects because... Imagine being that fucking stupid. You're a nursing student, a field where you are expected to handle diverse patients. 
And you get on TikTok thinking, Man, it's just the internet. It won't have no ramifications. It won't have no repercussions. And saying shit like this. That's why I'm grateful to the internet. I know some people are like, oh, you know, the internet's going to be the death of us. No, it's going to be the death of ignorance. And I welcome that shit wholeheartedly. She decided to pick being a rate to the cyst over having a nice profitable career and a secured future. A round of applause somebody bag. for this very brilliant EA we're seeing on the screen right now. For those of us wondering, her name is Asa Blanton and she's a nursing major at the Indiana State University. Oh, wait a minute. Indy fucking Anna. Indiana is Midwest, bitch. You're in that country. How is this non-country motherfucker going to tell people from the actual country that they're not country? So last I checked, Indiana's a bit west of us. But it's still mid fucking west. So if we're gonna play that game, I'm gonna say geographically, you're not country, bitch. You're in motherfucking Indiana. Why don't you go down to Texas? Or go down to Arkansas, go down to South Carolina, even fucking Florida, and talk about who and who's not fucking country. You play too many fucking games and you got the stupid prize because you threw your whole fucking career away before you even got it launched. Dum dums, racists are dum dums for real. And this video she made is presently making the rounds on TikTok for obvious exactly, reasons. Exactly, Neon. I don't get it. She talking about <laughs> black people can't be racist because your mammy and pappy would pick a cotton. No, my mother, my grandparents actually fought in World War II, the Korean War, and marched on Washington. My great greats though were enslaved. So, the fact that she doesn't even know history, the fact that she's literally trying to tell black people that are grandparents, not realizing how many generations a lot of us fucking actually go back. And not to mention, some of us have indigenous heritage too, because you fucked over our people on that aspect as well. I I'm telling you, if we would just stop letting these motherfuckers act like they're the brightest people in the room, it would be so much better. This game looks so silly. It is 2024 and people still act like they don't know what a digital footprint is. Yep. They still act like they don't know that what they put on the internet, it's not going nowhere. It's going to be here forever. People be on here saying the most craziest thing. Yep. Acting like, you know, it's not going to come back to haunt them. No Whether it was 10 years ago or something current, this stuff is going to be brought up again. It's really crazy how some of these are really losing their mind all because Beyonce made some country music. Yep. If you continue to watch the full video, this is a student. I believe they said she's at Indiana State University and she's a nursing major. <laughs> You're going to lose all of that. Yep. Once this gets the attention that it needs to get and people really start spreading this and it gets back to the university, they're going to have no choice but to handle it in some way. Same, Neon. You're going to get kicked out of school. Yeah. You know, imagine you becoming a nurse. You know, somebody that's supposed to treat people of all colors, all races, all ethnicities and stuff like that. But you have that type of hatred yep. towards black folks. Mm -hmm. That's crazy. Not only is the Internet exposing the race, but it's also showing just how stupid they are. Because even if this is how you felt towards black people, why in the hell would you come on the Internet and say this? She felt it make no damn sense. Yeah, Ray right to the season makes palm colored folks very stupid and ignorant because you would think that at least someone who is training to be a nurse would be smart enough to know that even if they hold this kind of belief, this is not something that they should be admitting to online. You and I'll say this, not to interrupt the young lady, as somebody who recently had to deal with nurses, even the other day when I thought I was dealing with a kidney stone. I live in a town right now where there's not a lot of people that look like me. It is what it is. I'm not intimidated by it because I hold my own. But when I say those nurses were so fucking sweet, you didn't get that weird, oh, it's, it's you look from them. They know me and Greg's name now by heart because of the calcium stuff. And when I went downstate for the hospitalization, the nurses were my heroes. They had my back in every aspect and not damn near one of them were melanated. My doctors were, which was a nice change of pace. But the fact of the matter is, you've got to, as a healthcare professional, set biases aside. You took a Hippocratic fucking oath. 
to help people, to heal people. And this person as a nursing student is indicative of people who think, well, I can just get by. The land will support me. Society will support my ideals more than anything. And maybe 50 years ago, but not no more. Because there are way too many of us that are tired of this shit. Way too many of us who just want to move forward, not backwards. Way too many of us who are tired of fucking gatekeepers, whether it's gatekeeping gender, gatekeeping ethnicity. Because I need to remind people we're humans, all of us. We're just different ethnic and cultural backgrounds. People who want to gatekeep what it means to be a man, what it means to be a woman, what it means to be your sexual preferences. We have to stop this. This rule has broken enough of our fucking society. And it helps no one when you lead your life with open hatred because you're afraid to be your unapologetic self. And you're afraid to let anybody else be theirs. Because, oh no, my values. So your values is to hate on somebody because they're different than you? And that's what you want to protect, you little foot soldier for fuckery? Okay. We're going to get to at least one more because I know there are You would think that's people. something that they would just inherently know, especially with the times we live in. It's 2024, for goodness sake, that they should probably not let people know that they hold this belief. Or maybe let the belief fucking go. You would think that they'll be smart enough to know that. You would think they'll be smart enough to know that all the time we're living now, you could basically be throwing your entire life away. No, it's not you yeah. could. You would basically be throwing your entire life away. Your because future... even if Indiana State doesn't discharge her, because I've seen young girls get discharged for less, for literally rapping and saying the N-word. Even if she got through the program, what hospital would want to hire that person? What private practice would want to? What person would let them into their house? She might have some clientele that, you know, believe like her, but her career is shot for actual traditional hospital and clinic work now because of this stupid shit. Was it worth it, dum-dum? I don't think so away your dreams away everything you had thought you would want to be away if you come online and say something like that but no because they are basking in the insanity of rage to the season like their lives depends on it common sense where they can't find it but anyways the indiana state university did release a statement after her video surfaced right they said as stated in our university mission statement indiana state university has a long history of valuing diversity and inclusiveness on our campus. We are aware and continue to monitor the situation involving comments published online by an Indiana State University student. The student's comments do not align with our institutional values. We reaffirm our commitment to fostering an inclusive environment. Indiana State University takes incidents of this nature seriously and is committed to ensuring a welcoming environment for everyone. And I'm telling you, ISU is a serious college. They tend to make it into a lot of the March Madness and stuff. That's when I hear their name a lot for, like, bowls and stuff like that and uh, basketball tournaments. So the fact that this reflects on their university is not going to bode well for this young lady. The fact that they put their number out there so that people can call and complain about her. She has literally flushed her fucking future down the toilet. All the fucking get a dunk on black people about who can be country. Okay. One. Me, I don't know with all this many, many English that they are speaking, Shad, they want to monitor, they are monitoring. What are you monitoring, Bawa? The video is already out there. What else is there to monitor? Are we monitoring spirits of the 21st century? Because do the needs for and don't waste people's time. This is why I don't get about this establishment. When something goes down and we can all see what happened, there is video evidence, but they will still say they are investigating and reinvestigating and monitoring. What are you monitoring? I, I get her frustration, but she has to understand as a school, they do have to fully investigate before they expel a student because colleges you pay for that shit like i know it's not like that in other countries a lot of countries have free high higher education especially if a person's in a specialty but here in the states you literally shell out money i had to shell out money for my degree even if i fucked up i have the right to appeal any expulsion that's just how it works here in the states I'm going to get to this other young lady because I know Ivy was giving a rant and I, I didn't mean to cut her off, but 
I only got about three more minutes and I wanted to get to this young lady clapping this back because too many people think that we're just going to take this shit. We're just going to let you be racist with us. Tell us our place though. Nah, motherfucker. Mm -mm. We are the children of our ancestors. We are their legacy and we ain't taking that shit no more. For this video, do let me know down below in the comment section what your thoughts are. And of course, as always, I would see you guys in the next one. People are hearing the album, but they're not listening to it. Like, they're hearing the sounds and they're enjoying, like, the sonic composition, but they're not listening to the actual message. And I've literally made notes. Let's start with American Hello, Requiem. Hello, no Let's start with the meaning of Requiem. It's a mass, like, paying of homage and respect to the dead. And when I first realised what this meant, because I was like, this sounds like a hymn, this sounds like gospel, this sounds like church. I also think it's her saying respectfully to all of the people that said that black people don't do music, I'm going to shut it down and I'm going to assassinate you with a pen. I thought maybe she was paying respect to all of the dead black Americans that came before her that contributed to country music. But then as we listen throughout the whole album, we realise that the album is not only an allegory for black people's presence and contribution to country music and country music's origin, but also black people's contribution to America as a country as it exists today. This album is full of double entendres. Let's stick with American Rock Rim. She says, we'll be the one to purify our father's sins. I don't think she's talking about Matthew Knowles. I think she's talking about the forefathers of America. Yeah. And the sins that she's referring to is the mass unaliving of indigenous and black people, as well as the transatlantic slave trade. And this is confirmed in Yaya, where she says, whole lot of red in that white and blue. And I think while she's referring to the American flag, she's using that as a metaphor for blood. Specifically, the blood of the people that were exploited to build America. The last example I'm going to share is in Amen when she says these statues were beautiful but they were lies of stone. And I think she could either be referring to the Statue of Liberty, as we know there no, are black no, people and brown so people in America that do not have the liberties or civil liberties that white people have. I think she but meant I also the Confederate statues. I think it could be statue. referring to the number of Confederate statues that exist in America today. And these Confederate statues were erected 50 to 100 years after the Civil War. And there are literally, I think, 830 of them. They're currently being tallied and there are conversations about having them removed. Literally happening right now. So it really frustrates me when people say that there isn't a story behind this because what Beyonce is doing is using music as a vehicle to speak about contributing to a system that benefits from those contributions but does not recognize them. And this has exactly. like a double meaning for both country music in general and for America as a country. And that is a perfect way to end the conversation with regards to that because like I said, anybody who's read my book Axiom, anybody who's going to read this second novel when I get that finished, understands the allegories that I even put in there. Nobody with ties to our country's past sin can go without understanding that we use our creative energy to show people what dehumanization feels like, what othering people feels like, what turning people into monsters, what gatekeeping certain things. I talk about it all the time, how science would be so much more advanced without fucking eugenics, which held us back for centuries, keeping both POC and women out of the conversation. Because need I remind you women, even though you go, oh, we have Mary Curie. She was disrespected in her field. We had the woman who literally found the key to our DNA structure, whose work was literally stolen out from under her because she's just a lone woman. She shouldn't get all the credit for it. Our society has allowed bigotry to hold us back. And if we are going to get to that beautiful ending that I'm seeing in my mind as I re write this next story. The real epitome to humans understanding what we are, who we are, and what we need to do to move on to a better place and not just do death. We have to stop letting these bigots gatekeep everything. We have to stop letting them hold the narrative of what's what. And we have to stop letting them tell us that we're not human enough. And I am definitely going to wrap this up. I will be back next Friday with another one of these Bonnet Chronicles. You know me. I love my politics, social issues, and stuff. This was a lot lighter on the politics side because I'm tired of hearing about the man baby's indictments. I'm tired of hearing about his failed campaign 
shenanigans or how much money he owes people. Sometimes you just need a break from talking about Washington's shenanigans too. I know he's allegedly meeting with Speaker Johnson. I don't care. I want to make it where Johnson is no longer Speaker of the House and that Hakeem Jeffries is. That's why I'm going to be driving hard after Kittle graduates in June with them Teller Tuesdays coming back, making sure people are registered to vote, people know their rights to vote, people understand the absentee the ballot and mail-in vote. If you can't stand in line, resources that people have, I'm coming guns a fucking blazing in June to make sure that we show that man once again that he is rejected. But until then, y'all, I'm going to relax. I'm going to go make dinner for Axie and Wolf and I. And I hope that you have a great weekend. If I don't see some of y'all on Saturday when I do the YouTube live, those are always replayed. If you missed any of this, this will be up on YouTube in about an hour or two as well. Thank you all so much. Respect, Beans, Neon, Grandamere for the Lurk, everybody new who, who is sitting in tonight. You know, I, I love doing these Bonnet Chronicles, and I appreciate y'all. I appreciate the chat. You always keep it fun. You always make great points, and I will definitely be back next week. Big hugs to all of you.